Hey everyone, it's Mr. Bebe, and this lesson will serve as an introduction to plants. So let's get right into it with our first key concept. Plants have cells, tissues, organs, and organ systems, just like animals. So let's take a look at some plant tissues that are, remember, a bunch of cells specialized together serving a common function. So we have dermal tissue, which is the plant skin, uh, ground tissue, which kind of does all of the metabolic functions, and that includes photosynthesis. And then you have vascular tissue, which is kind of like veins and arteries in animals, but these are slightly different, and they have different names, which we'll get into in just a second. So plant organs would be things like leaves, stems, and roots. And each one of these organs has all three types of tissue, vascular, ground, and dermal tissue. So let's look at leaves first. Now leaves are the things that carry out photosynthesis and gas exchange in the plant because they are full of chloroplasts. Now chloroplasts are the organelle within plant cells that contain chlorophyll and they actually uh, do all of the photosynthesis, kind of like mitochondria do cellular respiration. So as you can see in the picture there, CO2 going in, water and oxygen coming out. This is all what's happening on the leaf surface. So the way they do this and exchange this gas is they have these tiny openings called stomata. It's just stoma if you're talking about it singular, plural is stomata. And those stomata are uh, open and closed by these things called guard cells. So they're specialized cells that actually help regulate things because when they swell up, they actually make sure that that stoma is open and then they shrink to close the stoma as you can see in the picture below. Now on the right hand side you can see an actual microscopic picture of a stoma on a leaf surface. So let's go to stems. Now stems transport water, minerals, hormones, and other products of photosynthesis up and down the plant through the, the vasculature of the xylem and the phloem. So those are the transport systems. Now let's look at those uh, a little bit more closely. The xylem is the tube that transports water and minerals from the roots to the leaves. So the xylem goes up. So everything goes up through the xylem. And you can see if you've ever done that experiment before where you stick a piece of celery or a piece of lettuce into uh, uh, different colors of water, you'll see that the dye will actually travel up because the xylem is carrying that water. The phloem is a little bit different. That tube, uh, it goes up and down. It transports food in the form of sugar and hormones up and down the plant. So the phloem can go up and down. The xylem can only go up. So then the roots are really important as well because they're what absorbs the water and minerals from the soil and they anchor that plant into the soil. And the way they actually absorb things a lot easier is they have all of these tiny little hairs on the surface of the root that help them uh, increase the surface area so that can, uh, absorption can happen a little bit better. Think of them like the microvilli and villi in the small intestine. So now there's two different organ systems within plants. There's the shoot system and the root system. Now the root system is pretty self-explanatory. It's the roots. The shoot system is pretty much everything else. So like I said, shoot system, all above ground stuff. So the leaves, the stem, the flowers, if the fruit, if there is any on that plant, while the root system is just everything below the ground um, that you generally can't see. Now, some plants do have some roots that you can see on the surface of the ground, but um, mostly they anchor and they get this stuff from the soil. So now we have a second key concept here. The root and shoot system work together to absorb nutrients and maintain homeostasis. So we're gonna quickly look at nutrient absorption and homeostasis within plants. So first, nutrient absorption, uh, the root system absorbs the nutrients from the soil and then the shoot system, um, those, uh, the stem is going to transport the nutrients to the rest of the plant through the uh, xylem for water or phloem for everything else. So that's nutrient absorption in plants. Homeostasis, there's a little bit more to it here. First, you have to introduce this concept of transpiration. Transpiration is the loss of water uh, through those openings in the leaves called stomata. And uh, the way this occurs is through a negative feedback loop system. So water is absorbed by the roots, it goes up through the plant, and it evaporates from the leaf surface. Now the plant regulates this very tightly. When it needs to hold on to water, it does. When it needs to get rid of water, it does. And all based on a negative feedback loop. Now, how the root system and shoot system work here. Um, so root system, again, absorbs the water from the soil. The shoot system is going to use that xylem to transport the water up the plant. But what I put here, this little picture, is something that uh, you guys need to understand about water. 
The reason water can work against gravity and go up a plant is because there are two different properties called cohesion and adhesion. Now cohesion is the ability of water molecule, molecules to stick to each other. Okay, and they also have this property called adhesion, which means water molecules will stick to the surface of other materials. So uh, you should you know, put some drops of water on the table, and if you put uh, two drops of water close to each other, they're going to want to come together very quickly. Or you can see um, if, if your roof is leaking, which I hope it isn't, but you can see droplets of water hanging uh, before they fall down. So there's a little bit of adhesion there. So this is a, a nice uh, chart here looking at homeostasis about uh, what happens when water levels drop below normal or CO2 levels drop or if water you know, increases, decreases, everything that's going to happen. So I want you to take some time to look at this and you can kind of understand this figure eight system of this negative feedback here and how transpiration and everything plays into it. And finally, um, something that plants do to maintain homeostasis is they go dormant when it gets cold. That's why you see plants lose all of their leaves and everything, and all of those leaves and everything come back when it gets warmer. The plant does this to conserve energy. It's not going to bother trying to do a whole lot of photosynthesis or anything like that if the conditions aren't right. So plants go dormant when it's cold because they're just going to conserve energy and wait for the right time when the environment is more suitable for it to carry out photosynthesis.